Alright, Mrs. Howard's chemistry class. Unit 10 continued. This is Heat and Thermochemistry Part 6. And another lovely cartoon because you need to laugh every once in a while. Alright, so Roman numeral number 4 on your notes, phase changes. And we, when we say phase changes, you might also know them as changes of state. So again, this is some information you already know, so we're reviewing what you should know. And you guys already know that when something changes phase from a solid to a liquid to a gas, that it's based on temperature and pressure. Mostly you're familiar with it being based on temperature. And um, usually when we talk about um, gases, that's when we can bring in that whole pressure thing too. Okay, while a substance is changing phase, the temperature stays the same. Oh my gosh, that's huge. Put a big circle around that. Let me say that again. While a substance is changing phase, so when it's at that zero degrees Celsius, where that's when the point with that liquid water changes to solid water, you'll find that you'll find both the solid and the liquid point. And if you keep adding the heat to it, like you've got the ice and you want to change it to the liquid water, while there's still ice and liquid there, you have a steady temperature at, 100 deg at, at zero degrees Celsius. It's not until all the ice is gone that the temperatures can go up again. So the heat that you add to it, like if you crank up the heat to get it to melt faster, yeah, it's going to melt faster, but if you keep a thermometer in it the whole time, the temperature is going to stay at zero degrees Celsius until everything is gone. So the heat energy goes into changing the phase rather than increasing the temperature. <coughs> Okay, so here's that graph that I'm talking about. So this is for water, right? So we have way over there on the left-hand side, you've got negative 50 degrees, so it's definitely a solid. And as you slowly warm it up to zero degrees, notice that the temperature stops increasing while it's melting. And then once it all turns to water, you can, you're can you still adding heat to it. It's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter until it gets to that point, that 100 degrees Celsius, where it's changing from a liquid to a gas. So while it's at that change of state or change of phase point, the temperature stays a steady 100 degrees Celsius. Then once you've got it all changed to steam, it can get even hotter and still. So while something is changing its state or changing its phase, it stays at that steady temperature. All the extra heat that you put into it goes to get it to change from a liquid to a gas more or faster. So when you look at these changes of phase, here we <laughs> changes of phases. Here you have the solid, the liquid, the gas. If you're going from the left to right on this picture as you're looking at it, the solid we have to give it energy. Don't we have to take the ice, the solid ice, and give it heat in order for it to warm up to a liquid? So the energy is absorbed; it's taken in by that ice. You get it warmer; it takes in the heat until it changes to a liquid. You take that water, and don't we have to give energy to it to get it to change to a gas? Well, then that means the opposite is going to give off energy. So if you have steam, the gas water, it actually has to lose energy in order to drop back down into the liquid phase. And the liquid phase has to lose energy. Don't we take, we cool it down. We are actually taking the heat out of it so that it can change back from the liquid down to the solid. So energy is absorbed going from the solid all the way up to the gas. Energy is released to get rid of it going from the gas back down to the solid. All right, evaporation is another word that you need to know. And evaporation is really easy. Evaporation happens when you have a liquid change into a gas at the surface of a liquid. There's a difference between evaporation and boiling. When we boil stuff, if you think about boiling water, you put the heat on the bottom, and it actually changes from a liquid to a gas at the bottom where the heat is. So you see those bubbles come all the way up to the surface. So it's changing to a gas down at the bottom of the pan coming up to the surface. Evaporation, that's not the way it works. Evaporation only works on the surface of the exposed liquid. So if you have um, like a big fish tank and it's got a big surface area, it's going to evaporate, lose a lot of liquid just because it's at the surface. If it's a big tank but it's got a narrow opening, like you've covered up most of it up, then it's not going to lose nearly as much water because the surface, there's not as much surface of the liquid exposed. If um, kinetic energy of the molecules increases enough, some of the molecules at the surface of the liquid may be bumped free into the gaseous stage. So keep in mind, solids, they're moving, the molecules are moving, but they're just vibrating back and forth. They can go faster and faster, but, but they're just vibrating. They're kind of limited in their motion. Liquids can move all around. They can slide into each other into the next one. If they gain enough 
energy. One of them can be bumped out up into the gas phase in there. So you've got some natural evaporation that's going to occur every single time just because the molecules are moving around. You heat it up, you increase the movement of the molecules, and you're going to have it evaporate faster. Here we have a lovely picture of condensation. This is where you're going back down from the gas back down into the liquid phase. And this is when the gases bump into something like a solid, like your iced tea that you have out there. And it actually cools down so rapidly that it turns back to a liquid right on the surface of your glass. That's when we say the glass is sweating. It's because the moisture, the, the liquid, the gas water that's in the air, hits that cold glass and it loses so much energy, it changes from the gas state back down to the liquid state immediately. Molecules with lots of kinetic energy bump into slower ones, and they lose so much energy that they can't stay in the gaseous state. So we have condensation. Now, that's not the same as sweat on your skin, by the way. Um, you're not, when you have sweat on your skin, you know, like little beads of sweat, that's not coming from the air around you. That's actually being put out of holes in your skin, the sweat pores that actually put that liquid out on your skin so that when the air comes along, it can evaporate the water off of your skin. And evaporation takes energy. If you change it from a liquid to a gas, you have to put energy into it to get it to do it, right? Changing liquid to gas, boiling it, evaporation also takes energy. Where is it getting the energy? It's getting it from the heat of your skin. So it takes energy away from your skin to get that liquid evaporated off your skin, and so it ends up cooling your skin down. All right, next one's boiling. Boiling is changing the liquid to the gas. It can, can occur at the bottom of the liquid. It can occur at the top. It can occur anywhere. So you're changing the liquid to a gas, usually at the, at the bottom, because, you know, we put the heat at the bottom down there. Oh, how lovely. All right, freezing then is when you have a liquid that, uh, liquid that changes to a solid. So you have to take the energy away from it. You've got these liquid molecules that are moving around like crazy, and somehow you have to slow them down and get them to where they're just barely vibrating against each other. So you have to take energy from them, and that's what we have refrigerators for. We, we uh, have a machine that actively takes the heat out and dumps it into the back of the fridge. And so it's getting rid of the heat out of the inside of the freezer. Where does the heat come from? You go fill up your ice trays, stick them in the freezer. Or if you go um, if you go down to the grocery store and buy meat to put in your freezer so you can save it for next week, the heat that's in the meat when it's, when it's not frozen is heat flows from hot to cold. And so it's flowing out of that. And if they keep taking the heat out, they keep pulling the heat out of that freezer, then the meat is going to stay warmer than the rest of the stuff around it, and it keeps getting rid of the heat, dumping it. Okay, new word here for you is enthalpy. Strange word. Enthalpy is talking about a change in heat during a chemical or physical reaction. So enthalpy is delta H, change in heat, which is a reasonable thing. And enthalpy is going to be measured in what we measure all the heat in, and that's joules. So that capital J is a joule, so delta H is going to be measured in joules. So delta H... What about the heat change that occurs when you've got a, a chemical reaction or a change of state? Melting, boiling, evaporating, they all require energy to be put into the system, so they are endothermic. That means they're going to have a positive delta H. We take energy and we add it. So we're adding heat. We're adding energy. So when you melt, you've got the solid ice. Always, always think of water when you have questions on this, because you know everything about water. You take that solid ice, and you have to add heat to it to get it to melt, right? So we add heat at positive delta H, or we increase the enthalpy. Freezing, condensing, those have to release energy. They have to give off, have to dump off all that extra energy so that they can get cooler, and we end up having a negative delta H because we have to take away the extra energy in order to get them to freeze or condense. So we have negative, we take away the heat. And that's a negative delta H or a negative enthalpy or negative heat. So again, it's all measured in joules. It's just a form of energy that we're talking about here. Oh, pretty picture. The amount of energy can be written in a chemical equation. So if we have a uh, chemical reaction that's endothermic, it means that we're going to have the energy put into the system at the beginning, on the left-hand side with the reactants. If we have a chemical reaction that's exothermic, we're going to write the energy amount over here on the right-hand side with the products because it's putting out or producing 
a lot of energy. Now, the picture that's on there is a Rube Goldberg type picture, and it's just kind of a funny thing. You might want to pause this and look it over and see what's going on with that.